Last year, the AI giants added $2.4 trillion of market cap. In the dot-com era, those companies added $2.9 trillion of market cap before losing $1.8 trillion when the bubble eventually burst. So the question we have to ask ourselves now is, are we in an AI bubble? And the answer is not what you might think. The first question on your mind might be, what is a bubble? A bubble is when an asset like a house or a stock goes up in price to such a degree that it's disconnected from its fundamentals. And we've seen multiple bubbles like this before. So I mentioned, for example, the housing bubble, uh, which happened in 08 and 09, and also the dot-com bubble. And we also have more recent stuff like the NFT craze of 2021. One common point of all of these bubbles is that the price of the asset we're talking about, for example, an NFT or a house, increases a lot for a certain period of time. And then when the bubble bursts or the last fool has bought in, everyone realizes that, oh, something terrible is happening and people start selling. And how these bubbles usually end is with a rush for the exits, meaning everyone tries to sell at the exact same time, leading to the prices falling faster than you might expect and also harder or longer than you might expect. If you've ever heard the adage, stocks take the stairs up and the elevators down, this is why. The dot-com bubble was when uh, internet stocks like uh, pets.com and Amazon saw an extreme uptick in their valuation and share price and that eventually collapsed very violently in the beginning of the 2000s. People invested in internet stocks because they saw internet as the future. But I think we came to a point of irrational exuberance where the internet would sort of be absolutely everything. Uh, and I think this is one of the hallmarks of a bubble as well is because you think that whatever it is you're investing in is supposed to be able to solve all the problems you have. So if I'm trying to buy pet food, for example, and I go to do that on pets.com, uh, I might get pet food delivered through Pest.com, but that doesn't mean that going to the store is an absolutely idiotic concept that I will never do again. So it's not necessarily solving a problem, it's just adding a, a different type of service. The dot-com bubble burst when the last idiot was in and people realized that, oh, okay, instead of going to Amazon.com or Pest.com, I could just go to the store and get exactly the same things at, for, for example, a cheaper price. And also the realization from investors that these companies don't make any money. Companies like Amazon survived because it's fundamentally a good business. What's different with Pets.com as compared to Amazon is that Pets.com was valued off of how many clicks they got to their website. But Amazon had a very specific business model where they started being the online bookstore and then started moving into absolutely everything else, which is why the logo has an A and a pointer to the Z, because it's the A to Z store, it's the everything store. So I think before we get started talking about the AI bubble, we need to talk about what AI actually is. So AI is a relatively old concept, uh, which has been around for longer than computers have, uh, which is the fact that we want to build intelligence into machines. So what we mean by that is that you want a machine to be able to do the exact same tasks as a human, or perhaps better. An example of something that's AI that's been around for a long time is computer vision. So an example of computer vision that's uh, in use uh, in one of the applications a lot of people use today is uh, Snapchat. So whenever you take an image of yourself or a video and you add a filter from Snapchat on top of your face, that is an example of computer vision. So that is machine learning or AI adapting to your face, giving you, for example, an animal mask or making you look like a baby or an old person or whatever. And AI applications like that has been around for a long time. And the same goes for business processes where you're, for example, trying to predict the likelihood of fraud in financial situations or something like that. But the reason we're talking so much about AI now is because of ChatGPT, which came in November of 2022. And I think one of the main differences or one of the main reasons that we're talking so much about AI now because of ChatGPT is because the interface is very different. When you talk to a chatbot previously, what you're used to getting is like, uh, do you want to talk to a customer service rep? Yeah, sure I do, because the chatbot is terrible. But here you got a chatbot that was actually good and it knew so much. It could answer almost every single question that you had with such good precision. And I think that impressed a lot of people and you started seeing that, okay, AI actually is the future. I think one of the reasons so many people have jumped on the AI train now is because you see the potential. So you see what could be uh, by using AI. You see that, for example, you could have uh, less work in organizations or you could get more done faster. So how does OpenAI make their AI algorithms? The way they do this, and this is common for almost every single algorithm out there, uh, and it's called training. And what you do is you show the algorithm tons and tons of examples of the same thing over and over again until it understands what it is and can tell you what it is as well. And I think probably the easiest example to understand is if we look at a problem from computer vision where you want to say uh, the difference between a cat and a dog. 
So what I do is I show my algorithm, for example, thousands of images of cats and dogs where I say, this is a cat, this is a dog. And then later, what I'll do when I'm done training and I'm testing it, is I'll show it a image of a dog without telling the algorithm it's a dog. And if I've done my job correctly and trained the algorithm, it should be able to say, oh, hey, that's a dog. And this process that I've just described is the same for images and it's the same for text. So when OpenAI make their ChatGPT models, they do the same thing. They show tons and tons of examples. Uh, but the main difference is that the image model that you can make on your own computer saying if this is a cat or a dog doesn't cost that much money to train. But ChatGPT takes a long time to train and costs a lot of money to train because it's a lot of data and the models are really big. Uh, so what do I mean by big? Um, what I mean by that is occupying space in memory. And this is going to get a bit technical, so I'm sorry in advance for that, but sort of, sort of how it has to be. Um, when you train an AI algorithm that is that big, is you try to fit it all onto a GPU or a graphical processing unit. And if the model can't fit on it, you have to have more GPUs. Uh, so if you were to, let's say you had a GPU that was big enough to train ChatGPT all on its own, that doing that with just one GPU would take you something like a year. I think it was estimated that, that it would take 355 days to train ChatGPT3 uh, on one GPU. But instead of doing all of that work on one GPU, you would spread it across thousands of GPUs and have it take a couple of days instead. And this training process isn't done just one time and then you're done. Uh, in some instances, that is the case. So for example, when you're using computer vision stuff, you wouldn't necessarily update that model all the time. But when you're working on language and words specifically, you try to retrain as often as possible because you're generating and getting in so much new data all the time. So in order to make the model even better, you try to make it better by retraining it. And this training is done by uh, OpenAI in a huge data center owned by Microsoft or someone else. So training is one contributing factor to why people think that we're in an AI bubble. Uh, but one of the other things is called inference or usage. So whenever you as a, you or me, as a user of ChatGPT ask it a question, that also incurs a cost. And to really get a scale of understanding of how many GPUs that we're talking about when you're doing training and when we're using this, we can only look to, for example, Mark Zuckerberg, when he said in early 2024, said that they were buying 350,000 GPUs from Nvidia. And if you're on a gaming PC, you might have a GPU that costs $1,000, $2,000, something like that. But if you're Facebook or Meta uh, and you want to buy 350,000 GPUs, each one of those GPUs are gonna cost you $40,000. Okay, so quick math on that. Uh, 350,000 times 40,000, carry the two, and that's 14 billion. 14 billion dollars on hardware. I hope they got a bulk discount. So I realized that we're getting really technical and into the weeds here, and I could talk about this for hours, but instead what I'm gonna try to do is to explain the AI ecosystem in 30 seconds. We've started with the first thing, and that's GPUs, which is really important. And uh, those GPUs goes into data centers, and those data centers have networking, and they have memory. And after everything is said and done in the data centers and the technical side there, we go to who is actually using this stuff. And that would be businesses like uh, Microsoft or that would be Meta. And once they have got their fill and they sell that to their customers, then we have the consulting guys on the other end saying, hey man, I can make you an AI application just as quick as that. And that is kind of the speaking the AI ecosystem very simplified. In order to answer the question, are we in an AI bubble now? I think a couple of things need to be true. So one of the things that you can see often happening in bubble times is that estimates from analysts, for example, from banks get really out of hand. So if we go back to the telecom and dot com era, what the analysts would say then is that they would estimate that every person would have two cell phones and people would spend 60% of their disposable income on internet access. And as far as I'm concerned, that hasn't happened yet for AI. We're not in a place where uh, every single analyst is saying like AI is going to change everything and people are going to lose their jobs and everything is going to be different. Yeah, sure, people are saying the future is going to be different, but you would say that anyway. Yes, Mark Zuckerberg did spend $14 billion on GPUs, but that's because GPUs are really hard to come by. So we're supply constrained, which is another big driver of bubbles. If we were at a point where supply would overstate demand, saying that there was too much supply and too little demand, then yeah, sure, we could say that we're in a peak bubble era. But that is not the case now. Everyone is scrambling to get compute and that's uh, GPUs and data centers. I mean, yeah, we're not close to having filled up capacity. 
Okay, so I know I've talked a lot about GPUs up to this point, and I'm not trying to say that GPUs is AI and AI is GPUs. The AI industry is a lot more, and so are GPUs. Because GPUs fall under what we call the semiconductor industry, which is huge and consists of way more than just AI. So if we are in an AI bubble, for example, uh, Nvidia wouldn't go bankrupt just because of that. They will still make graphics cards that are used to play games or to render computer graphics that you use at work, for example, if you're a designer. And the AI industry isn't just Nvidia either. It's a lot of different or a lot of other players, like for example, Microsoft and Google. They make, for example, the cloud services that a lot of workplaces use, maybe the ones that you work at. And then you also have app providers that are maybe people that are making something that's completely different from AI, but it's AI enabled. So the AI industry is huge and so is GPUs and semiconductors. So it's not just one thing. So to answer the question, are we in an AI bubble now? I think there are certain parts of the industry that are getting close to a bubble and that would only be semiconductors and specifically Nvidia. There is no other company that could be close to it than them. So for example, if you're looking at AMD, which is a closely related company because they also make GPUs, and this is why it's in very important that I said just now that AI isn't GPUs and GPUs aren't AI, is because even though AMD also makes GPUs, they don't make the same types of GPUs with the same software that Nvidia does. And as a consequence, they're not selling as many GPUs and they're not going into that many data centers. So yeah, sure, if Nvidia doesn't live up to expectations, you could say that that would be a problem and that would be a problem fast. So Nvidia could, as a consequence, see a lot of value shaved off of their share price if they don't, if they miss some annual result. Okay, so I'm gonna try and answer the question, are we in an AI bubble now? And the answer for me is no, but some parts of the industry might be getting close to a bubble. And where it's natural to start with that would be NVIDIA. Most of you won't know that I am an AI engineer by trade. Uh, so that means that I have been using NVIDIA products for my entire career, which is almost 10 years at this point. And one of the main differences between a GPU from NVIDIA and one from, for example, AMD, is that the software that comes with NVIDIA is absolutely masterclass. It is so good and it makes you train algorithms a lot faster than, for example, AMDs do. If you are a gamer, then it doesn't make that much sense to be like very pro Nvidia or very pro AMD because you might not notice the difference all that much. But if you're in AI, the only one that's used is Nvidia and there is nothing else. So how would an AI bubble affect, for example, Nvidia? Well, if that was to be the case, then AI would have to not deliver. And I think you would see that quite early actually, because then companies like Meta or Microsoft wouldn't be spending billions of dollars every single year in order to either retrofit a data center or buy a GPU. But if after a while these companies come back and see that we're seeing very limited value from our AI initiatives, then I think all of the companies that would be related to AI would take a haircut when it comes to share price. Maybe we're deeper in an AI bubble than I think, but I think we're at the start of the hockey stick. Uh, here at this point because I haven't seen anything that says that the demand for AI is slowing down or that we've reached anything resembling a peak. Let's try to take the bearish view and see what happens if AI doesn't grow exponentially the next 20 years. At that point I think there's a lot of companies like for example Nvidia and Microsoft, Google, that are going to see some share price cuts uh, just because of how much they've grown now and how much is already priced in. But as a stark difference to the dot-com bubble, none of these companies are valued by clicks. So they're not gonna go bankrupt even if we are in an AI bubble. So these companies are really solid and really good. So if I had money parked there, I wouldn't be worried at all. I'd actually buy more because they're good companies either way. And AI is going to be part of the future no matter what. And if AI fails, you can still use your Nvidia graphics card to mine Bitcoin. And at that point, the biggest Bitcoin whale in the world would be Mark Zuckerberg. So you're probably ready to invest in AI after watching this. And me personally, what I've invested in to get exposure to AI is semiconductors. And if you don't know what a semiconductor is, then I highly recommend watching this video right here that explains what a semiconductor is from A to Z.